All right, guys, um, just want to make a quick video on how to use a data book. This data book that I got right here is the one they issue to um, Marines for their annual rifle qualification. And this is the one I just had because I just uh, qualified this week. And I just want to show you some things um, I go through when uh, using a data book. So here you have a spot for uh, your correct hold. Now that's your hold without wind. And um, if we're using an ACOG, I would draw the chevron here, right where I would use it to hit center mass on the target 200 yards. These spots were uh, really meant for iron sights, and that was um, really people don't use um, iron sights anymore. We qualify with the ACOG now, so it's not that uh, important. However, at 200 yards with iron sights, you had 8.3, and that was your 800 slash uh, 300 yard setting. And at 200 yards, we put minus two. So minus two clicks would be your 200 yard setting. Since there wasn't a 200 yard mark on the, um, on the iron sights at the time. And then you go over your win. So let's say I have left to right full value. Um, I estimate it to be one to five miles an hour. And I'm using a carbine, I'm using an M4. So then I would, that's, um, these are in inches right here. So it shows you how many inches you need to hold in that direction. So I'd hold left three inches, we'll call it, for full value win. So left three inches. And again, elevation doesn't really change. We're using an ACOG with a BDC. We don't have to adjust it. Now, you have your plots here. They call this a tri-fire, but it's pretty much just like a zero. Um, let's say my shots were here. All right, so then I'm going to fire three shots. Target board goes down. It comes up with three shot spotters. I don't know which order they were in, so I can't draw numbers, so I just draw Xs. And then I fire my next three. ends up being here. All right, so my adjustment wasn't uh, my adjustment wasn't bold enough, so I fire I adjust and fire my last four rounds because we use ten rounds. I have four rounds here. My zero is good. And again, there was a wind, so I'm gonna uh, subtract the wind from that. And uh, that's what this bottom part's for. So your correct hold, I minus the wind equals whatever your adjustments. Are. Okay. So the next part I want to go over is called the shot ahead, shot behind method. Um, you use this to save yourself time on the um, firing line during that string of fire. So um, a good thing, a benefit from that is you have more time to fire off shots in those uh, less stable positions, like let's say the standing, and you can also beat the wind. And what I mean by beating the wind is simply um, getting your rounds off as fast as you can, but while maintaining good fundamentals and accuracy so that you can... Um, get them off before the wind has a chance to change. Now the wind might be going full value, but let's say it starts to go half value, half value, let's say it's kind of oscillating, it's not staying consistent, or um, the wind speed is changing. So, you know, it might be going from, uh, it might be going one to five, and then it might be going to six to 10. And if you've ever, um, if anyone's ever shot a rifle in the morning and you shoot into the afternoon, usually, where you're, wherever you're at, the wind usually gets stronger in the afternoon. And if you have 20 minutes to fire on that string of fire, you might notice the uh, wind changing. So you want to get your rounds off fast so you don't have to uh, read the wind and call the wind for every shot. So let's say I have no wind and I'm using my shot ahead, shot behind method. I'm going to fire my first shot. As soon as I fire it, I follow through, I'm going to call that shot center mass and I'm going to aim back in on my rifle and wait for that uh, target board to come back up they pull it down to the pits they put a shot spotter and it comes back up all right so I see that my shot was center mass I'm going to remember that and then I'm going to shoot again without changing anything I shoot again follow through they pull the target down so when they pull the target down I'm going to mark my second shot or my, uh, call my second shot and then mark my first shot Alright, now let's say the target board comes back up and my shot was over here. Now let's say the wind, let's say, uh, we'll, we'll say the wind changed. Now that my shot was over here, I'm going to remember that and adjust for it on my third. So I'm going to fire my third shot, call it over here, so I adjust it for the wind and mark my second shot. Now when um, my, the target comes up with my third shot, I'm going to remember where it's at and uh, shoot my fourth round. So my fourth round here. My third round was in center because I held for wind. 
my fourth round, I held the same spot for tar uh, I held, held the same spot as I did for target three, and I wait for um, the target board to come back up. Four shots there. I see it's in center mass. Okay, I'm gonna fire. Use the same hold. Fire my fifth one. Now the string of uh, string of fire is over. I can get out of my position. You know, take the sling off, whatever. I see uh, my fifth shot was in the center. So that's how that works. All right. Um, another thing is just recently. Um, a couple months ago I had my uh, 100 subscriber contest, I just reached 100 subscribers and um, I've been around almost a year now I think, I had since my first video so it, was, it, was, it took a little while but since I had that contest I've gotten about 90 more subscribers relatively quick and um, in the last two days I think I've had about nearly 15 more subscribers and um, I feel like some, someone must be saying something nice about me somewhere and uh, maybe I just haven't seen the video yet or the shout out. I have my, my playlist right now is like 130 videos that I, that I want to watch um, to catch up just on the guys I've subscribed on. I've subscribed to. So um, if it's out there, thank you for um, helping me out and I thought I'd do a shout out myself. Um, so Mr. Surgical Precision and Civilian Marksman, these two guys, they both helped me out um, when I was just getting started out. You know, I had some questions for them, and they both helped me, um, you know, by uh, supporting my channel, sh giving me shout-outs, things like that. Um, and I really appreciate them for that, so I want to give them a shout-out. However, I, I think most of these guys here, if you've ever seen my channel, you've probably seen theirs already as well, because they're, um, uh, they got some good videos out there. Uh, ACS Blue Eye has some cool guns, has a different, you know, a big variety of them. He's not, like, particular to one type. And he has some suppressor uh, suppressors on just about all of his long rifles, I think. Um, if you're interested in that kind of thing, and he has some good knowledge on him as well. Uh, long train M1A. I mean, he's got M1A in his name. Uh, he supported my channel a few times in his videos, and um, I feel like I should give him some thanks for that. Um, he was also in my contest, and he was the first prize winner. Fu Ying Bro. Uh, guy's really cool. I just recently. I guess recently, within like the last two months or so, um, started watching his channel, and you know, not it's not just about shooting guns, but he also has a lot of insight to give, and just uh, things people should don't really think about that much when they come on here um, with their gun channels or just to watch gun videos in general. And uh, accuracy speaks. Um, he's another guy. Uh, he's about the same place as me as far as maybe subscribers goes. Uh, quite a few more videos and um, has some knowledge to share and offer. Also has some really cool guns as well. Um, if you're interested in long guns, uh, long rifles, shooting uh, distance, he um, he does that, some of that too. And uh, that's it for my shout outs. I'll leave links in the description to their channels. Uh, check them out please. And uh, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.